Good morning and welcome back to Brochures Adventures and today we are at the Mango Bike Rental Center here in Chiang Mai and uh, we're getting a few of these beautiful bikes to take the road to uh, Pai today. The 762 curves in the road and about four hours of driving. We got about four people today, it's gonna be a good time. Got my friend Tim over here, it's gonna be wild. I first came to Chiang Mai in early 2016, just a few months into my backpacking adventures. Over the years, I have returned to Chiang Mai more than any other destination, experiencing the many things this amazing area has to offer. But just coming off the Chinese New Year celebrations, I wanted to revisit a place I only spent a few days years before, but in a more adventurous way. That's why, today, we rented manual scooters to drive a road containing 762 curves to the town of Pai. Do it. Bank, baby. Pai itself is a town in the Mehong Song province in Thailand's north, bordering the Shan state in Myanmar. Once a quiet village, Pai is now a tourist haven known for waterfalls, gorges, hippie culture, and amazing food along its nightly walking street. In short, it's a great place to relax and enjoy life. Riding in Thailand can be pretty dangerous, especially on the route from Chiang Mai to Pai. There have been many reports of tourist bike accidents over the years. I personally know a few fellow travelers who have been in minor accidents on this stretch. If you have never driven a scooter before, this isn't where you want to start. Also, it's probably illegal if you don't have the proper license. Although, it is common knowledge that if stopped, Thai police can look the other way for a price. Our route takes us north out of Chiang Mai on the 107 before taking a detour left on the 3009, which which is just a little north of the Tiger Kingdom. This route will take a little bit longer, but it is completely worth it for the small villages and the scenery. <laughs> we have stepped off on the uh, 3009 route. Uh, we got lost going up the 107 to uh, the road to Pai and had to turn around. But we made it to this little place where we're going to have some cow soy from a local and uh, then we're going to get back on the road and I think maybe 15 or 20 minutes from now we will hit the actual road to Pai which has got the 762 um, turns. So our bags are already heavy and it took an hour and a half just to get out of town. Much like the bathroom situation in most of Southeast Asia. So after that delicious meal by this wonderful woman right here, we are getting back on the road. Cup and cup. Well, I think we've only been going like a half an hour again. Uh, we found a waterfall we're gonna go. It's the uh, Makfa, I think, Makfa Waterfall. Yep. You generally don't get to go here. Located on the north side of the Doi Sutep Pui National Park, near a semi-paved road off of Route 1095, heading towards Pai, Makfa is a great place to have a small hike and cool off under the falls. It's open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and the entrance fee is 100 baht, or four American dollars. At 60 meters or 180 feet high, Mach Pha is regarded as one of the best falls in northern Thailand. If you're in need of a good cleaning after a humid Thai morning, the falls can accommodate with pressure reminiscent of a fire hose. After you're done refreshing yourself in the falls, be sure to continue down the trail. It's a nice little hike that leads to a great view of the falls and a small cave to explore before heading back out onto the road. Just when you 
feel like you've got the hang of the uphill, you reach the top of the mountain and start your downhill journey. There's no way I was going to record all 762 curves in this road, but I think you can imagine almost three hours of driving it. Riding downhill is just as hard as going up it, only in a different way. You have to make sure you don't brake too hard when making the turn so the bike doesn't slide out from under you. But everything goes well and we arrive in Pi in the mid-afternoon. The hostel we're staying at is ironically situated down this alley next to a church. This literally is a wicker bridge. There probably should be a sign that says no walking. Holy shit. I'm not gonna go further, but you guys. I'm good. After a quick check-in, we dropped off our bags and went to a restaurant called Ganesh for dinner. Hostel of Choice is Common Grounds, right next to the river. It's owned by Jordan, an Aussie who's made his home here in Pai. Tonight, he just so happens to be personally tattooing a guest in the common area. How are you feeling right now? Well, I'm feeling all right. All right? All right. My oh boy Jordan, you got it. You got this. Pai's nightly street market starts around sunset and is a great place to get cheap and delicious food, especially if you're on a backpacker's budget. While you eat, you can also shop for souvenirs or that perfect pair of the ever-present elephant pants, a Southeast Asia backpacker favorite. When I was there, I'm pretty sure I could have lived off the gyoza queen. The hills surrounding Pai are a beautiful place to take a day trip which is why we are taking the day to drive and explore the area. This lush landscape is said to have been inhabited for 5,000 years, with 800 years of recorded history. First up is a cheap and friendly archery competition between yeah. me and Kevin. We came a long way, that's what the song said. Well, we made it up to the viewpoint here over Pi, and there's an archery range here, which is pretty cool. So uh, 50 baht for six arrows, gonna try it out. And then maybe that manual Ferris wheel over there. I can do all things, yeah, yeah. I'm not afraid of the moment. I'm not afraid I can't hold it. I gotta show up. Gotta get up in the morning. I gotta do it for Kobe. Okay, you get that one? So we just got done having a nice little archery session, me and Kev. Um, this guy is really cool. He let us use the archery set. It's like 60, 50 baht, something like that, to shoot. Uh, I think I had seven arrows, which was pretty cool. I haven't done archery since scout camp and stuff like that, like maybe 15 years ago. Um, and we're on our way to a waterfall next. Yeah, we came a long way, and that's what the songs say. And I can do all things, I can do all things. Yeah, I can do all things, yeah, yeah. We came a long way, and that's what the songs say. And I can do all things, and I can do all things. And I can do all things, yeah, yeah. We came a long way, and that's what the songs say. And shout to the people that made me. I'm from the A, know who I am. And that's the most dangerous statement. When we were there in February, Morpang was less a waterfall and more a place to relax. How do you feel? Although, like much of northern Thailand, the surrounding forest is always interesting to explore. We even came upon some farmers tending to their crops. Just 
just spent about 40 minutes at the waterfall. We're getting back on the dirt bikes and we're gonna head to Pie Canyon. So after a day of biking through the, the north here, we have come to Penn's Kitchen here in Pai, and the food is excellent here. Definitely recommend it if you come. Well, after that meal and the subsequent food coma, we're gonna try to get out to the bamboo bridge or the uh, canyon for sunset. Uh, yeah. What up? <laughs> The last time I visited Pike Canyon was April of 2017 with my other Aussie friend Denier. Back then, there were a lot less people around. During the day, hiking around the canyon ridges is a great way to spend the morning or an afternoon. Midday is usually extremely hot in Southeast Asia. Just be prepared for a little challenge and a lot of dust. Burning season in northern Thailand is usually March through April, leaving the sky smoky, which lends itself nicely to the beautiful sunsets. The moon is rising over there. Dude, it's rising super quick. Right and early the next morning, we made our way just outside of town to be among the first few people to visit the Big Buddha overlooking the area. The White Buddha, known in Thai as Wat Tra Tat Me Yen, stands watch 353 steps above Pai. As with all temples in Thailand, a dress code is enforced Men and women alike must cover their shoulders and knees to enter. There is no fee and you may sit anywhere on the tile you wish if you'd like to meditate. Well, this morning we've come to the Good Life Urban Health Center to grab some breakfast. Uh, I've got some fruit, eggs, and a little bit of toast. And uh, these two are leaving today, going back to Chiang Mai. So uh, it's just going to be me and Danielle for the next few days in Thailand. Once 
we said our goodbyes to Kevin and Tim, we hit the road once again. This time on a day trip into a much more rural area of Thailand, 50 kilometers northeast of Pai, close to the border with Myanmar. Our destination, Lod Cave. So after almost a two hour drive out here to Lod Cave, um, it was a little bit of a detour there. Uh, we got lost, took the wrong road, but we are now here and we're gonna take a lantern guided tour of the cave system. It was 450 baht for two people for about an hour and a half in all the caves. Since the cave is pitch black in most areas, our guide's first move is to light up an old gas lantern. Lod Cave is a mysterious place. 1,666 meters long from entrance to exit, with a freshwater stream running through the middle, it is filled with amazing geologic formations that seem to sprout from every direction. The longer you're in the depths of the cave, the stronger the smell of gas from the lanterns becomes. Sandbag walkways mark the path and keep you on track. This deer painting marks a human presence here as far back as two to three thousand years. Many formations have been noticed to resemble animals and even people. The best way to traverse the vast majority of the cave is by bamboo boats pushed along by a long stick. It's sort of like an Asian gondola ride. Come on, come on. The best part of having a stream crossing through is that you can feed the fish. Even though they might seem spoiled by the copious amounts of food, they don't act like it. As well, above, bats and swifts can be seen and heard as they prepare for their nightly activities. Bats are unable to take flight from the ground, so they have to return to the high cave ceilings in order to create lift as they drop. Bats, like me, have an affinity for sleeping, usually devoting 19 hours a day to relaxation. As you get close to the exit, you can climb a staircase and get a spectacular view of the cave as it opens into the forest. After heading back to Pai, Danielle and I decided to stay at a hostel further outside of town. With its open concept, the Daiji Pai Backpackers Hostel was a great place to relax for a few days with daily guided meditation, great views of the countryside, and a friendly atmosphere. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and think I deserve your subscription, please click the subscribe button below along with the bell icon to be notified of all my new videos. This video has not been sponsored, but I'll leave a link in the description below to my website and my Teespring page. So if you'd like to go over there and check out some of the designs that I put on t-shirts and sweatshirts, uh, feel free to go check those out and help support the channel. Thanks again for watching this video and never stop adventuring.